Okay, um, today you'll be learning about graphs. Uh, we'll first go over the different types of implementations and representations of the graph. And like always, we will later on implement it in very beginner friendly code. And um, just to give you a heads up, today we'll just go over the basics of the graph uh, representation and operations here, because we'll be talking about um, the graph search algorithms in another course that I'm planning to start. Okay, so, oh, and if you like my videos, uh, please like and subscribe. Um, thank you. Okay, so let's get started. Let's see this tree over here. So in this tree, we have nodes and we have edges. And in trees, the edges point from the parent to the children. But uh, what if we add a little bit more to this? What if these edges got a little bit crazy and started to point to other things? For example, a child node starts to point at its parent and then they start to point to each other or even point to nodes in other branches making cycles and even pointing to itself. This doesn't look like a tree anymore, does it? We can't tell which one is the root now, can we? Uh, this is what we call a graph. So for graphs, we call these vertices and these are called edges. When the graph has many edges, we call it dense, a dense graph. When it has relatively less edges, we say that the graph is sparse. So a graph is an abstract data type and so there are many different ways to implement it. You can make it a directed or undirected graph. An undirected graph means that every edge is bidirectional. It goes both ways. You can also allow cycles or not. You can also put weights on the edges. For example, you can use weights to calculate the time of passing a certain path from point A to B, like finding a path in Google Maps and calculating how long it would take. You might have also noticed that the tree structure is also a type of a graph, but it has more restrictions or rules like, for example, children cannot point to a parent, no cycles are allowed, or if it's a binary tree, there should be only maximum of two nodes as children and so on. So I just want to say that there are a lot of different implementations of a graph, which when you choose would depend on what it needs to do. Okay, so now uh, we know what a graph looks like, and we also saw different kinds of graphs. You can now tell that the graph you're looking at here is a directional graph. It allows cycles and it's unweighted. Uh, now let's think about how we're going to express a graph in code. There are two common ways to represent a graph. Uh, one would be the adjacency list and the other is going to be the adjacency matrix. So for an adjacency list, the graph is expressed as a list of vertices and each vertex will have a list holding the neighboring vertices. So it's going to look like um, a list of lists and these lists can be a linked list or arrays, dynamic arrays, anything that can implement a list. We will call the integer values of the vertices keys and if they're going to represent a set of information, they should be unique. Okay, so let's start filling in the adjacency list. Uh, if you see the graph, a one is pointing to two vertices, two and four. So these two should be in the adjacency list for one. And same goes for vertex two is pointing to one. So there should be vertex one in the adjacency list of vertex two. Do you see how one and two are pointing to each other? So if this was an undirected graph instead of a directed graph, all the vertices should be looking like this. If one has two, then two should have one. If one has four, then four should have one. When we want to add a new edge to the graph, we can just add a new element to the adjacent list. And when we want to add a new vertex, we just need to add a new vertex to the graph list. Okay, so uh, that is how you can represent a graph with the adjacency list. Now let's look into the adjacency matrix. We can also express a graph structure with a two dimensional array. We'll put the vertices of the graph as columns and rows, and they're going to represent the from and to vertex. For example, if we have five vertices in the graph, we would need a matrix of five by five. And here there is an edge connecting from vertex one to two. So that entry from one to two would be one. And same goes for every other edge in this graph. 
And if this was a weighted graph, the entries would hold the weight instead of just holding one. If we have an undirected graph, the matrix would be symmetrical because undirected graph means that all the edges are actually bidirectional. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the directed unweighted graph and see how we can add things to it. If you want to add an edge, you just need to fill in the from and to vertices. And if you want to add a vertex, you'll have to add a row and a column. But actually, you just can't add dimensions to a matrix. You'll actually have to make another one and then copy all the elements inside it. And we'll talk about that a bit more later on. Uh, now let's compare the two, adjacency list and adjacency matrix. First of all, which one do you think would take less space? If the graph is sparse, using the adjacency list can let us save space. But for an adjacency matrix, you will always need a space for V squared, where V is the number of vertices. Um, no matter um, how sparse the graph is, you'll need that much space. What about looking up an edge, like checking whether two vertices are connected or not, or checking whether who follows who? In that case, the adjacency matrix is much faster because we just need to do an array lookup, which would just take constant time. But if you try to do that in an adjacency list, we need to traverse the list of adjacent vertices, which in the worst case, we would need V steps if the number of vertices is V. Let's think of some other operations. Adding a vertex could be easily done in an adjacency list because we just need to add an element to the list. But for the adjacency matrix, we need to copy the whole array to add new dimensions to the matrix, which would be O of V squared. That goes the same for removing the vertex too. We need to create a new matrix with less dimensions then we need to copy the whole array, like the, all the elements in the array. When you remove a vertex from an adjacency list, you need to remove all the related edges. And for the worst case, all the edges can be on one vertex. So that would be an O of E, where E is the number of edges. Now, what about adding or removing edges? An adjacency matrix can easily do this. Adding or removing a value in the matrix can be done in constant time. For the adjacency list, adding can be done in constant time. We just need to add an element to the list of neighbors. But when we want to remove an edge from the list, it needs to be O of V because we need to traverse to find the edge. So overall, if your graph doesn't have too many edges, the adjacency list would be better than the adjacency matrix when it comes to space. And for the operations, if you need to do a lot of lookups and not much modifications, the adjacency matrix would be better. Okay, so now we learned about the basics of the graph representation and some operations. Um, let's go and see how this would look like in code.